Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk to you about one of the most important tools in my arsenal, which is my rank tracker. I'm going to try to convince you about why rank trackers are so important. So let's get started with uh, our first points about rank trackers. Here's what a rank tracker dashboard looks like. So what you'll usually do is you'll type in manually all the keywords that you're trying to target and the rank tracker will go to Google and it will try to find where you rank for each of the keywords. So here you can see that I've got all of my keywords listed and then next to it, it tells me whether or not they've changed in the last 24 hours. So you can see this one down here is changed by minus two. So it's gone down two positions in Google. That doesn't matter that much because it'll probably jump up again tomorrow. Then the current position it is. So you can see that um, I've currently got two here for this current project that are ranked number one, one that's ranked number two and then so on and so forth. So then it tells you the best position it's ever had the first position it had the first time that the uh, rank tracker found it and the search volume for the current um, term. So the left hand side is in the United States and the right hand side is outside of the United States. I'll show you how to get this rank tracker at the end. It's free. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, so let's have a look at six reasons why you need a rank tracker. The first reason, which is an awesome reason, is you can identify potential quick wins for uh, improving your rankings. So for example, here, you can see that two of my articles for this current project are ranked 11 on the SERPs. So it's the top of the second page of Google. If I just get that one more position up, it'll jump to the first page of Google and likely get a lot more traffic. One thing to keep in mind about things that are ranked positions 11, 12, 13 is the top of page two of Google is often a place where Google dumps articles that have been overly optimized. So if I see something that's in 11, 12, 13, I'll often go to it and see whether or not I've used the keyword too many times. Um, and that might be a sign of why it's ranked at number 11, 12, 13. Other times, maybe the keyword hasn't been used enough. So you just need to have a bit of a look at the on-page SEO and see how you can improve your on-page SEO. It may be that the article is really short, so you might want to lengthen it, for example, or a bunch of a whole, a whole bunch of other reasons. But it, it, you can see if it's ranking towards the top of the second page, that's a really good sign that you should be trying to target that point, that article. Um, but another thing that I look at there is the search volume for those two articles is basically nothing. So it's not going to be that big a win. So I'm not going to pay too much attention to it. Um, but if I look further down, there's these two that are ranked number 17 and they've got tons of search traffic. And in fact, one of them, the one that's got 1,900 searches per month in the United States, it's an article, uh, sorry, it's, it's advertising a product that's worth about $250. So if I got that to the top page of Google, then my site would be worth a lot more money per month. Therefore, um, I'm going to try to target that one a lot. I'm going to improve it on page SEO. I might use a tool like um, Page Optimizer Pro or Surfer SEO to make sure that it's optimized as much as possible. And the other thing that I might want to do is I might want to fire some backlinks at it to see if it ranks a bit higher. Okay, reason number two is you can identify seasonality really well. So here's an example of Christmas this year, uh, December 20. Uh, and then that week from December 20 onwards, you can see here that for one of my websites, it usually gets about 400 visitors or at the time it got about 400 visitors in the middle of the week. And then for this week, it only got around about 2000 visitors. So I lost about 50% of my traffic. If you go to your rank tracker, you can see whether or not you lost that traffic because your rankings dropped or whether it's just seasonality. It's just less people searching for it. If your rankings have dropped, it's a reason to panic. If you're, if it's just seasonality and your rankings haven't dropped, then the underlying health of your website is perfectly fine. So one of the best reasons, probably the best reason for having a rank tracker is you can see the underlying health of your website and you can determine why it is that you've lost or gained traffic. Number three, you can find out if you've been hit by an algorithm update. And this actually happened to me in May, 2020, uh, when I got hit by an algorithm update, even though my traffic was higher. So I woke up one day and my traffic was, for this website was around about uh, 9,000 sessions per day, which was nice and high, higher than it usually is, which is around about 7,000 sessions per day. But I logged onto my rank tracker and my rank tracker told me that I was, um, I had lost a lot of rankings. In fact, it was worse than that. I lost around about 10 top three ranking positions. So even though I had really high traffic, the underlying health of my site was bad. I was losing ranking positions. Now, what had happened was that, that week, 
I had one page that had kind of gone a little viral because this topic was in the news and a lot of people were searching a specific topic for a specific page. So I actually went onto Google Search Console and Google Search Console told me that there was this one page that was trending, it was up by 424%. Now my diagnosis of this, and I could do this because of my rank tracker, was that the underlying health of my site was weak, that the algorithm update had damaged my site and I could predict over the next few weeks that I would lose traffic once that one uh, sort of viral or trending article tapered off and it went out of the news. And sure enough, you can see on the right hand side that the following week, the traffic is well down from the week before. So a rank tracker can help you to identify whether or not your website is healthy, whether or not it's been hit by an algorithm update, far better than just looking at your traffic. Number four, you can identify indexing errors. So here, I, this was for another project. I scrolled down to the bottom of the project one day and I saw that f six of my articles weren't even found by my, SERP, for, by my rank tracker. It were, they were like well below position 150. So I went into Google Search Console, typed in the URL for those terms, and sure enough, it said they weren't even ranked on Google. So what I had to do was I had to click request indexing. It tested if my, my URL could be indexed and then it said, yes, your index has been requested and it's been added to the priority crawl queue. A few days later, I could go to it and I could see here that the URL was now on Google. If I never had a rank tracker, I would never have realized that I had these URLs, this, you know, it was just six days of work to get those six articles written and they weren't even ranking, they weren't even indexed. So I would have lost those six days of work if I hadn't had the rank tracker to determine whether or not my articles were indexed. Number six, identify keyword cannibalization. Now this one's a really interesting one. Sometimes I'll type in a keyword that I'm trying to rank for and then it'll tell me on the right hand side which one of my URLs it's actually ranking for. Occasionally, say I have two articles, one that's best pens for teachers and one that's best pens for students. Sometimes I'll be ranking both of those keywords for one article instead of the two articles that I've written specifically for it. If that's the case, I'll usually collapse both of the articles into one article and make sure that that one article has an optimized amount of those both of those keywords because I'd can essentially cannibalize the two articles and one of the articles was useless. Okay, so let's sum up. A rank tracker is a more stable measure of your website's health than your daily traffic numbers. There are six top reasons why you need a rank tracker. You can identify potential quick wins to increase your rankings using on-page SEO or maybe even firing some backlinks in a page. Identify seasonality. Uh, you know, if, if, you've, uh, if you've lost traffic but you haven't lost rankings, that's the sign of seasonality. Number three, you can find out if you've been hit by an algo update, way better than looking at traffic. Just log on to your SERP robot the day the algo update rolls out and you can see whether or not you've gone up or down. Number four, you can track your rankings over time, of course. Number five, you can identify indexing errors. And number six, you can spot keyword cannibalization. So what you need to do, if I've convinced you that you need to get a rank tracker, head over to serprobot.com. It's free for your first 25 keywords. So if you're new and you've only got 25 articles up, you can put all of your 25 keywords that you're targeting there and you'll be able to track all 25 of your keywords and where they're ranking in the Google rankings. Once you've gone over 25, you can buy another robot for, for $5 a month and that'll do another 300 searches per day for you. So you can see here that my estimated workload, I'm doing searching for 700 and, 274 keywords per day. So I have two robots, one that's free and then my one that costs me $5 a month. So let me know in the comments below. If I convince you to get a, uh, go to SERP robot and get a rank tracker, let me know. And if you have any questions or comments about rank trackers, leave them in the comments below as well.